On Halloween night when I was around 12 or 11, I stayed up late on my switch with my headphones plugged in. It was late, at least midnight. I decided to go get water in our outside fridge that was in the garage. I have to mention my parents had friends sleeping in the trailer outside, so the door was unlocked to go into the garage just in case they came inside during the night for any reason. When I got out of my room to go get the water, I brought my Nintendo Switch with me with my headphones plugged in. Right before I got to the garage door, I decided to turn it off and take my headphones off as well. I didn't have a reason to do this and it's not something I normally do at that age, but it might as well be the reason I'm here today. When I put my hand on the garage door handle, now with my ears free, I heard a loud crash in the garage. My body went cold. It felt like I was made out of white noise, but I didn't freeze. I calmly checked the door handle by turning it slowly as to not make noise and once I realized it was unlocked, I locked it quickly. Right as I locked it, the door handle started to turn and rattled rapidly four times. I ran to my parents' room and knocked loudly, effectively making them both wake up and they asked me what was wrong with the door. I said, please, tell me one of you is outside in the garage, right? My dad answered no, and after I told him what happened, he said it was most likely their friends wanting to come in and told me to go unlock it. Believing them, I went outside with a kitchen knife. I watch enough horror movies to be careful. The next morning, my parents asked their friends if it was them to find out that not only did they hear someone trip and whisper, fuck, but none of them left the trailer that night, and I had effectively stopped and scared off an intruder. The door is always locked after that night on Halloween. It was a cool October night. My friends and I were at a Halloween party, hanging out and just having some drinks. A childhood friend of mine, we'll call him Jeremy, was there with us. Jeremy had a rough childhood and ended up joining a gang when we were teenagers. He tells me he's a product of his own environment. He had just been released from jail in 2023. When he's around us, he's a total goofball. Always near the food at the parties, you'd never find this guy without some sort of food or dessert. When we had enough of the party, our group decided we'd go get tacos at a local restaurant. I had honestly forgotten this restaurant was on the bad side of town where I was raised. And while this plays a big part in the story, my car, which had myself and my friends Jenny and Brianna in it, arrived first. Brianna drove my car since both Jenny and I were a bit buzzed and she was the only one who didn't drink alcohol. We got into the restaurant and ordered our tacos and made our way towards an empty booth. A few minutes later, the guys arrived. It was Brandon, who had a broken leg. Garrett, who's the all-talk kind of guy. Salvador, who's the typical tough guy. And Jeremy, the aforementioned gang member. On one side of the booth, it was Brandon and Jenny to my left and Brianna to my right. In front of me was Garrett. For some reason, Jeremy was upset and Salvador was trying to convince him to take off. With that, Salvador tells me they'd be right back and they leave. I overhear Brandon tell Jenny something and I ask him, What's up? To which he responds, Nothing. It's nothing. Just don't worry about it. I then ask Jenny, What did he just tell you? And she responds, The guy's left for a reason. The guy in front of us is a rival gang member. At this point, Brianna asks me what's going on and I say, Nothing. Trying not to spook her. She was from the nicer side of town and wasn't raised around these situations. I looked up and saw the booth behind Garrett had a bald man in his 30s sitting with three other girls. He constantly eyed us while we ate, but he didn't say a word. About 15 minutes later, Jeremy and Salvador came back and sat down next to Garrett. Jeremy was visibly upset. He had this animalistic look on his face. No matter what I said to distract him, you could tell nothing was registering. Then I noticed that Salvador had his chain necklace wrapped around his knuckles, and he and Jeremy were talking back and forth. Jeremy then said, I'm going to do it now. And Salvador responded, No, wait for him to do something first. And then Jeremy responded again and said, No, I don't want to give him the advantage. And then Salvador said, He's a pussy and he's alone. He's not going to do anything. Brianna then butted in and said, What? What's happening? Why is Jeremy angry? What guy are we talking about? Why does Salvador have that chain on his knuckles? My mind then began racing to focus on listening to the boys waiting for my move to get my girlfriends out. 
The girls sitting with the rival were now telling him to calm down. Brianna, shush, I said, trying to listen, and in an instant the rivals get up and starts yelling and runs out the back door. Mere seconds later, Jeremy runs out the front door, Salvador in tail and Garrett right behind him. Jenny, go, I yelled as I pushed Jenny, and we both shoved Brandon and Jenny and ran off towards the front entrance. Wait, I yelled as I ran after her, trying not to slip in my boots. Don't go, I hear Brandon yell as I chase Jenny. Everything was in slow motion at that point. I reached the front entrance, ran into the parking lot, and I see the rival being held back by Garrett and a stranger. He's yelling, I'm going to kill you. Across from him to my right, I see Jeremy being held back by Salvador and some other stranger. Salvador's yelling at him to calm down, and somehow Brandon made it there, crutches in his hand. Jenny's about ten feet away from them, centered, and she's looking back and forth, trying to figure out what to do. I look back again, and I see that the rival, his hand is shining, because he's holding a knife. I'm now yelling, Jenny, get away, thinking if he turns, she's close enough for him to stab. Everyone's yelling. The scene was totally chaos, and suddenly the rival gets loose and runs at Jeremy, knife in hand. In that moment, my childhood with him flashed before my eyes, our playground games, Naruto runs, literally everything flashed, and I screamed, no. By some miracle, the knife didn't connect. I ran to Jenny and pulled her farther away. Everything was a blur and now Jeremy was running towards the road, Brandon had crutches and all limping behind him. Garrett's running and Salvador was the last to go. Salvador made sure the guys got all the way across the six-lane road, and he ran back to us girls saying, get out of here now. The rival sees him and he gives him a chase again. Salvador, run, I yelled, and he instantly takes off following after the guys. The rival stops at the sidewalk feet away from us and yells, I'm going to kill him. Apparently, upon him entering the taco restaurant, the rival had confronted Jeremy over what gang he was from, which set off the whole altercation later on. And for some reason, the rival's sisters either didn't see us or decided to blame Jeremy anyways. Jeremy explained the rival had the knife to his throat, but he was too much of a baby to kill him. Whatever his reason was for not doing so, I'm grateful. I didn't want to see a murder in person on that October night. It was Halloween in my senior year of high school. I went to a Catholic high school, so we always had the day off after Halloween, because it's considered a church holy day so my friends were game to start our weekend early. On nights when we didn't go to parties, we usually did the same thing. We'd sit on my front steps for a couple hours and joke around. Then we would walk the neighborhood and usually end up at this crappy pizza place across town because the prices were so cheap. Since a few of us had recently broken up with our girlfriends, we weren't in a mood much to party, so we did our usual. It was around 10, 10.30 at night and the pizza joint is closing up for the night. There were three of us, me, my friend Pat, and my friend Jack. We grabbed pizza, finished, refilled our drinks, and headed out. To get back to my house, we had to cross the large mall parking lot that's about four football fields long and two wide. I should mention at this point, we aren't dumb, naive kids. We all had grown up in the city and had our fair share of urban experiences. All three of us were pretty streetwise and were competent out there by ourselves, but we experienced something this night that we were totally unprepared for. We were walking through this parking lot and it was absolutely desolate. Not a soul was in sight. Suddenly, we see a white tradesman van creeping slowly behind us about a hundred yards back. I know the old white van cliche, but I swear this is a real story. I point it out to my friends and we pick up our pace. We pop the collars on our jackets and hunch our shoulders to make us seem a bit bigger than we are. In an instant, the van speeds up and cuts off our path. Everything in the van is pitch black, so we can't see any people. That's when someone calls out in a non-threatening voice, Hey man, happy Halloween. You guys like Halloween? Despite the jovial manner in which was said, a van doesn't cut you off in a parking lot unless it has bad intentions. We had nowhere to go. We could run, but they were in a van. They would catch us easily, and we'd have to turn our backs on them as well. The man says it again. Hey, do you guys like Halloween? I respond trying to sound tough. Yeah, but it's over now. So we're heading home and you're in our way. Nah, dude, Halloween ain't over, he said. We got tons of candy in here. The tone suddenly shifted and we still can't see anyone in the van yet. 
The three of us puff out our chests and get ready for a fight. After a brief silence that felt like it dragged on for hours, Jack cuts the tension by sternly saying, Listen, dickhead, I don't know what you think you're about to do, but if you don't leave, we're going to kick your ass. Once he said that, the back door of the van swung open, and two very tall men stepped out. They had black suits with black leather gloves and were well-built, strong-looking. But the most menacing thing was that they were both wearing these cheap Mitt Romney masks. That's when we realized this wasn't a Halloween prank. At that moment, all three of us went to take off, but the van started driving circles around us. There was no place for us to go. We had no idea how we were going to get out of the situation. I have no idea what these guys were planning to do with three 18-year-old men, but they seemed like they knew what they were doing and were all getting ready for the fight of our lives. The van stopped and it looked like they were about to make their move. This was it. I mentioned that there was three of us that night. It was at this moment that my other friend Pat, the one that had stayed silent up to this point, leaned into both of us and quietly said, This is a Hail Mary, but get ready to run when I say go, alright? He then picked up one of our sodas and threw it with all his might at the driver's side window. The window was open in the cup miraculously connected with the driver's head. Pat screamed run, and we took off across the parking lot. The van squealed off in the other direction and we hurried home. Jack and I were both confused as to why a simple cup of soda got them to give up on their plans. Then we found out what actually happened. While we were panicking, Pat kept his cool. He nonchalantly dumped out his drink and slipped a big rock into the cup. Then he waited for the right moment. The driver, thinking that this kid had just thrown a drink at him, wound up getting smacked in the head with a huge rock. It probably knocked him out cold, or it at least bought us enough time to put some distance between us. All that was left after that was pulling off a miracle and getting the rock to hit. Maybe a guardian angel or God himself took care of that. I'm still amazed about it. Moral of the story, kids, don't panic when you're in a tight spot. If you lose your cool, you lose the fight. And I'm glad that our Halloween wasn't ruined.